So today we will begin a new unit, circular motion and gravitation. It's quite a short unit and uh, there will be a test on the unit by the end of next week. There will be a test on the unit by the end of next week. In this unit, we will look at a couple of important things. One, we will look at the kinematics of uniform circular motion. We will look at the dynamics of uniform circular motion. We will study Newton's law of universal gravitation. We will look at gravity near the Earth's surface and uh, satellites as well as weightlessness. And most importantly, we will study Kepler's planetary laws of planetary motion. Now understand that this unit strictly depends on the unit on dynamics and kinematics. So we will base of what we are going to do today on what we have learned so far. Now there are a couple of things that you should know by now. Um, first of all, Newton's first law of motion basically tells us that if the net force or the resultant force acting on an object is zero then there will be no change in the momentum of the object in other words the velocity and the momentum remains the same the velocity and the momentum remains the same now law 2 states that the net force acting on an object is equal to what the change in the momentum of that object for constant mass the net force acting on that object is equal to mass times acceleration what this means is that the net force acting on an object is equal to the mass of that object times the acceleration of that object. Another way to look at this is whenever there is a net force acting on an object it accelerates and the direction of acceleration is the same as the direction of the net force acting on that object. What this means is that whenever there is a net force acting on an object the momentum of that object does what? Changes. Now law 3 basically says that when two objects interact A and B, the force A experienced due to B is equal to but opposite to the force B experienced due to A. Now we will use these three laws in explaining uniform circular motion. The last thing first that you need to recall before we proceed is one the displacement of an object z delta r is just the final position minus what the initial position the average velocity is just the displacement of the object divided by time now similarly the average acceleration of that object is equal to what the change in velocity divided by the change in time what this means is that we this implies that the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of what? The change in velocity. Let me say that again. The direction of acceleration is not the same as the direction of velocity, but the same as the direction of what? The change in velocity. There are two different things. Now this also means that whenever the velocity of an object changes, the object accelerates. Do you understand that? Whenever the velocity of an object changes, the object accelerates. And what this also means is that when the object accelerates by Newton's second law, there must be a net force acting on that object. And that net force is equal to the mass of that object multiplied by what? Its acceleration. But the question is, how do we know that the velocity of an object changes? We know that velocity v is the speed of an object plus what? Its direction. This explains why velocity is known as what? A vector quantity. So the velocity of an object can change in three different ways. If the speed changes, for example, if a car speeds up and slows down along a straight path, the velocity what? Changes. Now, another way the velocity can change is both the speed and the direction of what the object changes for example an object projected upwards as the object is going upward the speed decreases at maximum height the speed is zero as it falls the speed increases 
In this case, both the magnitude and the direction changes. This we studied this in detail under projectile motion. Now the third case in which an object can accelerate is when the speed of that object remains the same but the direction changes. Now let us consider a circle. Though my circle is not that perfect, I'm drawing freehand. If the object is here, first of all, before I move on, I must say here that for an object to move in a circle, the speed of the object must be constant. If the speed of the object changes, then the path of that object will become an ellipse. Do you understand that? So for an object to move in a circular path, the speed of the object must be constant. Now let us consider an object moving in a circular path. Now at point A, the velocity is pointing along the x-axis. At point B, the velocity is pointing in that direction. This is VB. At point, there are vectors, so don't forget the arrows. At point C, the velocity is pointing in that direction. And at point D, the velocity is pointing in this direction. One thing that you must that characterizes a circle is that the radius of the circle remains the same everywhere. Now the circumference of the circle C is given by 2 pi the radius. This is the circumference of the circle. Now also keep in mind fellas, look up, look up. The velocity at A, VA, the magnitude of the velocity at A which is the speed at A is equal to the speed at B which is equal to the speed at C which is equal to the speed at point D in other words the speed of the particle around the circle remains the same it does not change as long as the path is circular do you understand this? now the next is the fact that the direction of motion of the particle around the circular part changes continually because the direction of motion changes continually it means that the object does what accelerates do you understand me the object accelerates this comes to a very important statement this implies that any object moving around in a circular part does what accelerates so this then brings us to another question if it accelerates what then is the direction of y the acceleration to determine that we are going to use vector um, addition keep in mind that i said earlier that a is the dv over y dt and we also concluded that the direction of a is the same as what the direction of delta v because delta t is always positive all right now if we consider the same circle now if we have the object initially at this point let's say the velocity is vi this is the initial position and after a very short time the object is at that point this is vf what you would recognize is that the change in v is equal to vf minus y vi which can still be written as vf minus or plus minus vi now minus vi is a vector that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to y vi do you remember the negation of a vector is a vector equal in magnitude to that vector but opposite in y in direction which means that minus vi thank you which means that minus vi is a vector in that direction this is negative vi so if we want to then look for vf plus minus vi vf we start by drawing vf vf that is the guy minus vi will be a vector in this direction this is negative vi then the resultant vector will look like this this is delta v 
you recognize that delta V is pointing straight toward the center of the circle. Delta V is pointing straight towards the center of the circle. This also means that the acceleration of an object moving around in a circular path is directed towards y, the center. Do you understand me? It also means that the acceleration of an object moving in a circular path is directed towards the center. It's completely directed towards the center. And that is why the acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration. Thank you, everybody. And I'll see you next class.